Chapter Six of Mari, Our Little Norwegian Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Engel. Mari, Our Little Norwegian Cousin, by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Six, The Wedding. "'There they are! They're just rounding the point!' exclaimed Mari. She was standing on the shore and looking anxiously down the bay. She was not alone by any means, for every one of the village was there with her. Why were they all dressed so finely? Why were they all looking in one direction? And why was the church door standing open? It was not Sunday, and it was the time when everyone was usually at work. Gustav and Friga who lived further up the coast, you remember, were to be married. There was no church in Friga's village, so the wedding party must come here. For what would a wedding be if it were not held in a church? Half of the beauty would be missing. Ah, here come the boats. The first one, of course, contains the fair bride and her lover. They sit on a raised seat with the bridesmaid and best man near them. The bride looks quite charming with the high silver crown on her fair head, it seems as though a queen and her royal party were drawing near. The boat is trimmed with flowers, and the rowers pull with a will. Two other boats follow close behind, containing the dearest friends of the bride and groom. As they draw near, the people on the shore hasten to greet them with a rousing welcome. And now the procession is formed and starts out toward the church. First comes the fiddler, with his violin under his arm. He is followed by a man bearing a large silver tankard. The health of the newly married pair will be drunk from this many times before the festival is over. Next comes the best man, with Gustav and Frigga close behind, after whom follow the fathers, mothers, sisters, and brothers of the couple. Last come the other relatives and friends. All are laughing and joking, and are bright with the pretty colors of their holiday clothes. Now they enter the little church and pass down the aisles strewn with juniper tips. The air is very sweet with the odor of the freshly cut sprigs. The minister is at the altar to meet them. He is dressed as usual, in his long black gown, with the great white ruff around his neck. But the bride! How lovely she looks as she stands with bent head, with a silver crown resting on her fair hair. A heavy silver chain is around her neck and she sparkles with rings and brooches and other ornaments without number. Her stomacher is covered with silver embroidery. Her apron is of the finest muslin, and is also embroidered beautifully. The little church was so full that Ulla and Mari were crowded near the door with the other children, but they could see everything that was going on. "'Isn't she beautiful?' whispered Mari to a little girl behind her. I don't believe our queen in her own palace can look grander than she. When the service was over, the wedding party left the church and turned toward the shore. Was the good time over now, do you think? By no means, for a whole week's merriment had only begun. The bridal party seated themselves in the boat in which they had arrived. The other boats were quickly filled. The fiddler began to play a lively air. The rowers pulled with long, steady strokes, and as they moved out over the clear, sunlit waters, one of the party began to sing. Others joined in the song until the air seemed filled with music. Ulla and Mari stood on the shore together, with the others who had not gone with the young couple to their new home. Gustav has made a lovely new house for Frigga, Ulla told his sister. I sailed over there last week with Ulf, and it was just done. The last piece of furniture was also finished. I wish we were going there today. What fun everybody will have, feasting and dancing. Never mind, Ola. We shall be grown up before many years, and then we shall be invited to the wedding parties, said Mari. Let's go in swimming and have some fun by ourselves this afternoon. Several other children followed the example of Ula and Mari. Soon there was such a splashing and diving that the echoes of the noise came sounding back from the mountainsides. Norse children are great swimmers. When Mari was no more than five years old, 
she had learned to feel as much at home in the water as the mermaids of whom her mother told in stories. She could stay below as long as Ola. She could dive and tread water and swim backwards. There was nothing to fear, for sharks were never seen near that shore, and the water was so clear one could see to the very bottom, no matter how deep it might be. End of chapter 6 Recording by Jill Ingle